Balance. What is it? The origins of aquaponics come from two biological practices. One being aquaculture, which is the breeding and maintaining of sea life, while the other is hydroponics, or the growing of plants without soil. When you merge the two, hydroponics and aquaculture, the result is aquaponics. My study is not based on the natural sciences, but on the cultural sciences. And how I was able to come up with this method is a mystery, even to me. The modern world seems to be drifting further and further away from nature itself, and I would like to find a way to re-establish that connection. If I can find whether crystals and precious gemstones can really have a positive effect on other natural life forms, then maybe I can show people that we need to live with the world, rather than move away from it. This collection of ideas and objects are overlapping, reacting to one another along a discordant tone. My interpretation of what balance means is a self-sustaining ecosystem where every aspect serves a function. I've realized this idea through an aquaponic system built in a toilet. My inspiration to use a toilet as the home for this system came partially from the fact that the natural plumbing of a toilet is ideal for aquaponics, but it was also influenced by the concept behind Marcel Duchamp's ready-mades, which included the recontextualization of everyday objects as art. One specific piece I focused on was his fountain which was essentially a urinal rotated 90 degrees. To me, a toilet is a meeting point between technology and natural occurrences, which is why I've used it to emphasize the relationship between the synthesized world and the natural world. Water records information, and its structure is much more important than its chemical composition. Water molecules form together into groups, they're called clusters, and these work as memory cells in which they record its relationship with its surroundings. So it is the structure that works like a nervous system. And if it works in this way, it means that it reacts to any irritation given. And to be more specific, it reacts to human emotions. You see in, these, in this 500 million year old piece of Amazonite, it has near perfectly aligned structures. On a macroscopic level, the uh, energy contained within these, uh, within these entities are not strictly visible. However, on a microscopic level, these alter the very makeup of the, the genetics within the plant. In a uh, digital rendering I sent off to a lab uh, in Norway, they found that actually this plant seemed to be taking a similar atomic structure to this Amazonite here. What these are are clay pellets which act as a soil in the aquaponic system and they're ideal for, for certain aquaponic systems because they retain water a lot better. So this is a section of the coffee filter which I've cut to fit in the drain which I've situated inside the cistern tank. Absorbent material, in this case cellulose, is soaked on the water solution and then placed in separate containers. So it takes quite a short time to start seeing results. As the crystals begin to grow, the information encrypted within the water starts to reveal itself. 
Two different samples of water, carrying different information, were mixed with a solution to create salt crystals. The idea consisted on exposing two samples of water to two opposite emotions, such as love and hate, and a third one was exposed to the sound of conscious breathing, which is key to a state called the non-judgmental mind, a state in the middle of two opposites. The reason why aquaponics works so well is because plants introduce algae to the water, which is then pumped into the fish tank, so the fish and snails eat the algae. The clean water is then cycled back to the plants, creating a closed-loop, self-sustaining system. For me, balance is more of a peaching out towards something, a process of entropy, a gradual degradation of matter to a state of uncertainty and disordered nothing, where opposing forces are acting upon each other, losing momentum and potential in a process of running down to this disorder. The coffee grows cold on the kitchen table, which means the universe is dying. I open the window. The sky is dark and the house is also cooling. The garden, the summer lawn and all of it finding an equilibrium. I watch an ice cube melt in my wine, the heat of the Chardonnay passing into the ice. It means the universe is going to die, the second law of thermodynamics. Entropy rising. Only the fridge struggles to turn things around, but even here there's a hidden loss. It hums in the corner, the only sound in a quiet night. Outside, everywhere in the vast sky, stars are cooling. I think of the sun consuming its fuel, the afternoon that has passed. The sample carrying information of positivity shows grain crystals revealing a light red color. The next sample carrying information of negativity reveals decomposing coloration. And the last sample reveals neutrality as the crystals grow showing their natural state of perfection and balance.
As we see, the tower block is both the witness and the scenery of the performance. As the busy hallways start to empty and the drilling sound of humans and machines start to diminish, allowing the shy, tiny sounds to echo on the moonlit walls, the building is being restored to the orchestrated melody of water drops and the dance of little fish. And in the middle of all the turbulence, it maintains its balance.